the design of a database is schema and the data stored in a database at a particular moment of a time is called as instance of database we're going to take a set of values as a input but it will produce only one value as a output that is what aggregate function if i wanted to display any of a column then we have to use a select right so it can be column name or collection of columns that will be considered as what column names so wherever we have more than one index then that will be plural of index that is indices everybody a warm welcome to one and all welcome to the model paper discussion of the bca's fourth semester subject called database management system i am rohini ts department of computer science vidyashram first grade college the temple of excellence mysuru so in our today's session i would like to discuss about the database management system that is in short dbms model question paper discussion as per the cbcs programming so here first uh, you all know that right so it will be for 80 marks so this subject main examination will be for 80 marks and it will be for 3 hours So when it comes to the 80 marks distribution, totally you are going to have two parts. One is part A and another one is part B. So let me discuss about this part A. So in the part A, you are going to get two marks question. Then how many questions you are going to get in that? How many questions you are supposed to answer? Totally you are going to get 12 questions in the two marks. Out of that 12 question, you need to answer only any 10. that is of your choice so you can answer any 10 then it will be for 20 marks then it will be for 20 marks fine that's regarding part a so when it comes to part b so here you are going to get four questions that is question number 13 14 15 as well as 16 so you need to answer all the question answer all the question then it will be 15 into 4 as equal to 60 marks then how will be the marks distribution so if you consider the question number 13 in that you are going to get two sub question that is a or b so you need to answer either a or b again in the a you are going to get one or two sub question even in the b so you need to answer the complete sub question completely so then only you will be able to get 15 marks so that you have to choose whether i wanted to write a or b so if you are choosing a then you have to answer both the sub questions of a so if you are choosing b then you have to answer both the sub questions of b then you can't expect a marks 15 marks if you are writing one question from this and another question from part b so there you can't expect 15 marks so if you wanted to get 15 marks then you need to write the proper answer either for the sub part a or for b this is how will be the question paper pattern i hope you all understood part a b in the part a 12 question any 10 it will be for 20 marks part b it is of totally 60 marks in that you will be having four question you have to answer all the four question in that you need to choose whether you wanted to go with a a or b so if you are choosing a a then both the sub questions of a in the question particular question of this 15 marks and then marks distribution can of 15 marks can be anything it can be 10 plus 5 or 9 plus 6 or it can be 8 plus 7 9 plus 6 so it can be anything the marks distribution we can't predict but this will be in this pattern only i hope you all understood regarding the pattern of the question paper let me go to the first one that is part a so when it comes to the part a already i have discussed it's all regarding two marks isn't it so here you need to answer any 10 questions out of 12 question let me discuss the first question what is data abstraction what do you mean by data abstraction so you all know to use whatsapp washing machine refrigerator we all know to operate but do we know exactly how it is working internally no right that is what data abstraction is all about you can see here it's a process of showing essential features by hiding background details from the user 
it's not the business of users to know its internal working they are simply representing the essential features and they are hiding the background details from the user or else you can write one more definition like hiding irrelevant details from the user and providing the abstract view of data to the user and it will be helps in easy and efficient user database interaction so if you know everything internally of the working conditions and all somehow it will be confusing so in order to remove all those difficulties they are just giving how to use it or they are only showcasing the essential features for the user and it's a process of hiding irrelevant data from the user is called data abstraction out of this you can write any one of the definition let me move to the next question define schemas and instances so here you have to observe schemas instances what is table or what is row column field all those are important terminologies we'll see about the schemas and instances now the design of a database is called schema so when we are designing a database that is considered as a schema then the data stored in the database at a particular moment this is very very important so if i have a table in that table if i am looking into that table right now then what is its content that is what will be considered as what instance of a database fine the design of a database is schema and the data stored in a database at a particular moment of a time is called as instance of database let me move to the question number 3 what is the purpose of data independence this concept is very very important why we require data independence data independence is the ability to modify the schema without affecting the programs and the application to be rewritten so here it's a ability in order to modify a schema we are changing the structure of a database without affecting the programs and application this is what the purpose of data independence let me move to the next question what is normalization so why we require normalization mainly in order to reduce the complexity in the database right so normalization is the process of organizing the data in a database to avoid data redundancy there should not be any duplication insertion anomaly and update anomaly as well as deletion anomaly in order to remove all these insertion deletion and update difficulties we require one organized way of having a data in the database that is what we are doing in the normalization and mainly it is used to minimize the redundancy from a relation or a set of relation there should be no duplicacy or there should not be any redundant data in the database in order to minimize that complexity we are using this normalization concept we'll see the question number 5 list the different relational model constraint remember students when it comes to the question you need to be very cautious why because we have sql constraint as well as we have a relational model constraint so now we are having a question with respect to the relational model constraint with respect to the table what kind of protocols are a set of standards that we are having so here in this we have three types one is implicit constraint or explicit constraint or schema based constraint and also we have a semantic constraint so when it comes to the implicit constraint we have a domain constraint entity integrity constraint referential integrity constraint and key constraint so these are the different relational model constraint that we have we'll have a question number 6 write any four symbols used in er diagram that is entity relationship diagram so here i have listed out some of the symbols along with its meaning so here we have a rectangle that represents an entity and we have a double rectangle that is what weak entity in order to specify a relationship we have a rhombus here if it is to be identified or identifying a relationship then it is of double rhombus and in order to specify the attribute we have a eclipse here so these are the different symbols which we can written for the question of er diagram symbols next we'll have a question number 7 mention any two aggregate functions so what are the different aggregate functions we have we have average minimum maximum sum and also you can take count here so these are the different aggregate functions which we have it will going to take a set of values as a input but it will produce only one value as a output that is what aggregate function we'll have a question number 8 mention the basic relational algebraic operation this can also be asked for 5 marks or 7 marks question 
fine so here what are the different algebraic operations we have so it will going to include select and also we have a project union set difference cartesian product and rename so these are the different or a basic fundamental relational algebraic operation next we'll have a question number 9 write the syntax of group by clause in sql so in the same way you can expect any of his syntax from any of the clause so it can be order by clause select clause so in that way you may get the question so here you need to understand what is any of the clause along with its syntax and example you have to be ready so here write the syntax of group by clause in a sql how we are going to use this group by clause first if i wanted to display any of a column then we have to use a select right so it can be column name or collection of columns that will be considered as what column names from from where we are getting from the table that table name needs to be mentioned here and i need to put a condition on what basis we are grouping so that will be used with the help of this where clause there i am going to write a condition then group by so we are grouping it by the column names we have to specify by column names and followed by order by if i wanted to have a order by like if you wanted to display it in a ascending or descending order then i can use a order by clause also so this is how the syntax of group by clause look like next question write any two built in functions in sql so what are the built in function so we have certain built in function and also user defined function so when it comes to the built in function it can be char length reverse lower so wherever we have a opening and closing of a parenthesis together then that always specifies the function okay that will going to perform particular task when it comes to the char this returns the character based on the ascii then we have a length len that returns the length of a string and reverse this function will going to reverse a string if i am giving abc then if i am giving the input as abc then it will going to give the resultant as cba this is how the reverse function will going to work then we have a lower that converts a string to lower case so if i am giving any capital letter that will be converted into lower case in the same way we can have a upper that will going to convert the string to the upper case then my input needs to be lower case this is how uh, you have to answer for the built in function next we'll see the question number 11 what do you mean by database recovery so why database recovery is required before that we'll see what do you mean by database recovery it means that recovering the data we are recovering a data when it get deleted hacked or damaged accidentally so whenever we are losing a data it can be deleted or hacked or it can be smudged with some other data and we may lose it due to the damage and disk operation is not having properly so those could be the different scenarios why the data has been deleted or why the data has been hacked so we have certain scenarios so if you are recovering from all those uh, difficulties or if you are recovering from all the failures of the data then we will be calling that as a database recovery so in order to retain the data as it is before the damage or before the delete or hacking of that data that we are retrieving it back that with the help of database recovery technique we'll see the question number 12 what is indices write its use in a database it clearly says that this will be for one marks this will be for another one mark we we'll see the definition of this indices so wherever we have more than one index then that will be plural of index that is indices here indexing refers to a data structure technique that is used for quickly retrieving entries from the database files using some attribute that have been indexed so here we are going to give certain index to the attribute based on that attribute i am retrieving the particular row or we are retrieving a particular entry or a record from a database quickly then we are calling that structure or a technique as what indexing so then what is the use of having it it will going to optimize the performance of a database by minimizing the number of disk access required when query is process so if i know where it is locating exactly then no need to bother about all other records so i'm just directly retrieving that record at a particular moment within a order time that is what the main usage of having this indices or a indexing 
I hope you all understood regarding part A. So here I have discussed 12 question. Amongst that you need to answer any 10. It's all about part A. Let me move to the part B. So when it comes to the part B, it will be of 15 marks question each. The marks distribution can be anything 10, 5, 9, 6 or it can be 7, 8. We will see the first question. Before that, here you need to answer all the following questions. So, four questions will be there and each will be for 15 marks. Total it will be of 60. We will see the first question that is question number 13. In that A, in the A we have a first sub question. Explain different data models in a database management system. That is for 10 marks. So, here we need to explain the different data models. Before that, First, we'll see what you mean by data modeling here. Data model is the modeling of a data description, data semantics and consistency constraints of the data. That is what the definition of a data model. Mainly, it will going to provide the conceptual tool for describing the design of a database at each level of a data abstraction. This will be helpful in order to describe the design of a database. Then what are the different types of data modeling we have? So we have a hierarchical database and network database, relational database model and we have a year model database. We will see each type now. So first we have a hierarchical DBMS. So here first we have a hierarchical DBMS. So when it comes to the hierarchy, then it will be like a tree-like structure. Okay. If it is a tree-like structure, then it will be, can be top down or a bottom up format. And also data is represented by making use of a parent-child relationship. It will be in the, what uh, root will be there. Along with the root, we are going to have different branches here. In the database, in this hierarchical DBMS, parent may have many children, but the children have only one parent. So it will going to depends only on that one entity and that root entity can have a multiple children. So here this is the example college department and it will going to include a infrastructure. If it comes to the department that will include scores, teachers and students will be there. If it is a course that can be theoretical as well as laboratory. This is how you are going to represent a hierarchical data model. Next we have a network model. So in the previous one one parent can have many children but here one child can have many parent that is in the network model it allows each child to have multiple parents so the relationship between the different entities will be more in this network model mainly help to address the need to model more complex relationship like as the orders parts many to many relationship in this network model it will be organized in a graph like structure. So here you can see that we have a different modules college, CBSA department and student library. So this student may also depends on the CBSA department and also they can have access to the library. All these will going to have a bi-directional if it is connecting to another database which is at the higher level then that is of network model. Next what we have relational model. So if it comes to the relational that's all related to table. Okay. So this this model is based on the normalizing the data in the rows and columns of a tables. Relation in the sense that is all related to table only. The relational model stored in a fixed structure and manipulated by making use of a SQL. Along with that you can write an example like this. It will going to have a table and each table will going to have a rows and column. This will going to have a connection with another table. In this way you can represent. Next, we have a entity relationship model that is ER model. It mainly based on the notation of real world entities and relationship among them. It is all related to what? Real world entity that is objects and what is the characteristics and behavior of an object that will going to be represented in this entity relationship model. Is formulating a real world scenarios into the database model. The ER model will going to create the entity set, relationship set and general attributes and constraint. This is all regarding entity relationship model. I hope you all understood regarding the question number A in that first question that is of 10 marks. So now we have a question number 2. Explain the role of DBA. So in before answering for this question, you must know what is DBA. What is DBA here? That is database administrator. Database administrator will going to have a responsibility for authorizing the access to the 
database and coordinating and monitoring its use and acquiring the software and hardware resources as needed. They are going to have all the kind of permission. They are going to helpful in order to access the database, coordinating it, controlling it and acquiring all the software and hardware resources which is required. And also this administration and maintenance of a database is also taken care by the DBA itself. Maintaining and monitoring and also the administration of that database is also a responsibility of this database administrator. So here you can see we have certain tasks which will going to be performed by the database administrator creating a schema, they are going to design a database and specifying the integrity constraint, storage structure and access method definition and granting permission to other user monitoring performance and routine maintenance. All these are the different tasks which will going to be performed by the database administrator. Let me move to the question number B. So either you can write A or now I have a questions with respect to the B that you can also write. So we'll see the first question that is in the 13B of first question. Explain the three schema architecture of the database. Very, very important question. Three schema architecture. So in this three schema architecture, mainly it will be considered as a convenient tool with which the user can visualize the schema levels in the database system. So how the schemas are organized in the database management system that can be visualized with the help of this uh, three schema architecture, right? And you are supposed to write these many points with respect to the three schema architecture. After that, you have to explain the three levels or what are the three different uh, stages that we have in a three schema architecture along with the diagram. You need to write in order to get the 10 marks from this question. So here, as we all know that the three schemas are only the description of a data and the stored data that actually exists at the physical level. So we have a physical level in that we have a stored data where the actual database table contain everything will be stored in the physical level. So whatever the input that we are giving to the database, it can be understood by it directly. So whatever the result in that we are getting from the physical level that can not be understood by us directly. So we have to do a conversion of that retrieving and displaying for that we require a mapping here and also you can see that points here. If the request in a is a database retrieval, the data extraction from the stored database must be reformatted to match the user's external view. It's like a translation. What I'm asking to the database that it doesn't know. What I'm getting as a result in that I can't understand. So we require a mapping in order to do that conversion. The process of transforming the request and results between the levels are called as mapping. With the help of this mapping, we can do that. And here you can see that three schema architecture is mainly used to support the DBMS characteristics that can be program data independence and supports the multiple views of a database. And as we all know that it has a three levels. First is internal schema, internal level in that it will going to describe the physical storage structure and access path. That means where the data has been stored that will going to be given by internal schema and we have a conceptual schema that is conceptual level mainly describes the structure and constraint for the whole database for a community of user. And we have a one more uh, level that is external schema which is at the external level that will going to describe the various user views. So here you can see that uh, related concept of mappings among the schemas levels are needed to transform the request and data and also program refers to an external schema and are mapped by the DBMS to the internal schema for execution. So all the level needs to be interdependent and it will going to take the data from the user. Again, it is displaying the data to the user as a result in. So the data extracted from the internal DBMS level is reformatted to match the user's external view that is formatting the results of SQL query for displaying in a web page. So this is what giving a query is an input here and we are getting it as a output as a web page. This is how the three level schema architecture will going to work. So don't get confused. We also have a three tier architecture that is different than this three schema architecture. And this is what the 
uh, diagrammatic representation of a three scheme architecture. So, in this we have a three levels external, conceptual and internal level. In the internal level, we have a stored database. In the conceptual level, we have a conceptual schema. At the external uh, level, user will going to have a external view. So, in order to have a communication between all the levels, we require a mapping at each stage. This is how you are supposed to write the answer for this three schema architecture. I hope you all understood. So, if you wrote all these things, then you are going to expect, you can expect 10 marks from this question. We will see the question number 2. Define the followings and it is a 5 marks question. So, 5 definition will be there. Each will carry is 1 mark. We will see the first question that is foreign key. So, in order to have a reference to another table. So, whenever we have a primary key in one table that is acting as a reference key in another table, then we are calling that as a foreign key. So, it is a column that creates a relationship between two tables. In order to create a relationship between two tables, we require this foreign key. The main purpose so, foreign key is to maintain the data integrity and allow the navigation between two different instances of an entity. This is how the definition of this foreign key goes. Next, we have a ER model, entity relationship model. Already you know about it, right? ER model stands for entity relationship model. It is a high level data model. This model is mainly used to define the data elements and relationship for a specified system it will going to use entity relationship in order to represent the real world object next we have a weak entity so an entity will going to describe itself so when it comes to the weak entity that depends on another entity will be considered as what weak entity it doesn't have its own identity it will depends on another entity then it is showcasing that as an entity. The weak entity does not contain any key attribute of its own. The weak entity is represented with the help of double rectangle. Already you have seen it in the symbols of here diagram. That is what weak entity. Next we have a attribute. What do you mean by attribute here? Attribute always specifies the field or a column. So, attribute is used to describe the property of an entity. So, what is its attribute? It has a color, it has a shape, it has a height that is all going to represent the attribute and we are going to use Eclipse in order to represent the attribute and also we have a different types of attribute, right? That is also important topic. Next, we will have a question number 5 that is domain constraint. What do you mean by domain constraints here? Can be defined as the definition of a valid set of values for an attribute. So, if I am giving an age as a attribute or a column, then what kind of answer or what kind of data it will going to be hold? That means, if I am writing 18 or if I am writing 18 or if I am writing it in Kannada. So, whatever it is. So, which kind of set of values it has to accept? That means, it will going to define find the valid set of values or valid set of data which need to be given for a particular attribute that will going to be specified as a domain constraint. If the phone number is a domain constraint, then it has to be max 12. So, it can't be more than that. Including the country code, we can have a 10 digits of mobile number. So, totally it can be 12. At most 12, it can't be more than that. That is what constraint we can give for the phone number. So, if you are explaining all these things, you are going to get one mark for each question. This is all regarding today's session. I hope you all understood. So, let me discuss further questions in my coming sessions. Until that, keep learning, keep on growing. Thank you.